drug development. But I'm going to talk to you about a disease that has one, count them, one drug approved. Now remember that um, mesothelioma has only about 1% of the patients of non-small cell lung cancer. So we're also a little bit further behind. So you've heard lots of immune checkpoint talks, recognize that uh, we've got a little bit of a way to go, but things are actually pretty exciting these days for us. All right. All right. These are my disclosures. So where are we going with clinical trials of checkpoint inhibitors in mesothelioma? Well, this is a summary of the um, ongoing and completed trials for this disease. Uh, we started off in this disease with the CTLA-4s, and we have a number of trials of the PD-1 and PD-L1 inhibitors that I'll review with you. So starting off first with the CTLA-4, several completed single agent trials, as well as ongoing and planned combinations. And we all started off with the MISO-TREMI 2008 study um, by Michele Mayo in Italy. And this was a single arm phase two trial of tremilimumab in patients who had disease progression after first line platinum, and they allowed both pleural or peritoneal. The um, primary endpoint was um, response rate with a target of 17%. Uh, typical patient characteristics that you'd expect in this disease. And uh, the trial, as you can see, had a partial response rate of only 7%. So it did not meet its primary endpoint. But one of those PRs lasted six months, one lasted 18 months, one occurred after disease progression, and 31% of the patients had disease control. So this seemed interesting enough that you know, the company wanted to pursue it, but they needed to change things. And so they changed the schedule and did a dose intensified schedule, giving instead of every three month tremulimumab, monthly for six doses and then Q12 weeks. And this was because PK modeling from the phase three melanoma trial showed that survival was superior for those who achieved higher drug exposure, which could be achieved with more frequent dosing. So in this second trial, the primary endpoint was immune response. Similar patient characteristics, very few sarcomatoid patients, response rate for immune responses, and 52% disease control with a median duration of 10 months. So this was very intriguing, and these two trials led to the DETERMINE trial, which is a double-blind placebo-controlled trial of TREMI versus placebo in 564 patients. Now, it took five and a half years to um, accrue to the last second-line randomized trial in mesothelioma of Varinostat. This trial accrued in a year. Hot drug gets you uh, patients sooner. And uh, accrual is complete, and data is expected almost any day now. So if the determined study is positive, it could lead to a new FDA-approved treatment for this disease, which would be only the second one that we have. So what comes next? Well, a phase two trial of DERVA plus TREMI has just been initiated in Italy, mainly second line, though they are allowing some frontline patients on. Ipilimumab has not been evaluated in MISO, but a randomized phase two trial of NEVO plus IPI is in development in France by the group that brought you the MAPS trial. Now, additional indications and combinations for TREMI in MISO may be limited, I think, by toxicity in this patient population. And unfortunately, there are no validated biomarkers that predict either response or toxicity for TREMI. What about PD-1 in mesothelioma? Well, similar to the phenotype of tumors such as melanoma that benefit from immune checkpoint blockade, about a third of mesos have high PD-L1 expression and a CD8 positive infiltrative pattern with a T-cell inflamed phenotype, similar to what Tunky is described in head and neck cancer. And so he's shown this um, immunophenotype in mesothelioma, about a third of the mesos being highly inflamed with prominent evidence of immune escape. PD-L1 expression in meso may also correlate with survival. And in these two series, uh, the most commonly, um, sarcomatoid most commonly expressed PD-L1 in the Mayo series was actually 94%. Um, and 
sarcomatoids, of course, have much shorter survival, but even independent of histology, uh, the PDL1 expression was predictive of survival. There are a number of clinical trials for a rare disease um, of PDL1 inhibitors and PD1 inhibitors in meso, and I'll run through these with you. And this field really became energized by this presentation by Evan Alley at AACR that was updated at World Lung this year. This was uh, part of the keynote series, Phase 1B trial, um, in which patients were screened for PDL1 uh, biomarker positivity and had to express at least 1% expression in tumor cells or stroma. These uh, patients had to have failure of or inability to receive standard therapy. And 45% of the patients in this series were PDL1 positive, so it's a fairly high rate in this disease. Uh, typical patient characteristics, 25 patients, 12% uh, of them had received no prior therapy, and 28% had received more than two um, prior lines of therapy. Only 8% were sarcomatoid. And here you can see the highest partial response rate that I have ever seen in mesothelioma for any single agent. Um, as well as a very high disease control rate. So 28% partial response, 76% disease control. Truly remarkable and really very exciting in this disease. And here's an example of a response in that trial, and I soon hope to make some slides of some of the responses that we're seeing in our trial because some of them are really quite remarkable. Here you can see the waterfall plot with 60% of uh, tumors decreased from baseline, and these uh, responses are durable. And here you can see the um, spider plot. Again, many of them are early responses. This is the progression-free survival of 5.8 months. I circled, maybe we're seeing a little tail at the end of the curve, but only time will tell. Interestingly, um, the patients on this study were eligible for enrollment if they had PDL1 expression in greater than 1% of tumor or immune cells. And they found no relationship between the level of PDL1 expression and the frequency of response. So the authors of this trial concluded that, yeah, this is manageable, safe. The 28% response rate, 76% disease control rate was better than what had been seen previously. And they felt that further evaluation in PEMBRO was warranted, and we're doing that study. So at the University of Chicago, we have a trial in which we are trying to determine the anti-tumor activity in an unselected group of meso patients, and then assess an optimal PDL1 cutoff. If activity is observed in Part A, which it has been, uh, then we will do prospective enrollment using a biomarker enrichment strategy for PDL1, and we'll expand the study to two additional sites in part to decompress my very busy clinic. Um, and so, again, we're looking to determine the response rate in both an unselected and a PDL1 positive uh, population and determine the optimal threshold. Then Tangi is doing a variety of laboratory correlates to characterize the T-cell inflamed phenotype. Uh, eligible patients have pleural or peritoneal and progressed on pemetrexid and a platinum. And for a rare disease, this trial is really accruing like gang um, uh, gangbusters and uh, will actually, the first enrollment uh, phase will conclude by the end of the year. We're also doing a window of opportunity study that should be opening in the next few weeks. In mesothelioma, patients generally have to undergo a VATS before they have um, a decision about surgery because you really want to know the pattern of the, um, uh, the pathologic subtypes. And so in this trial, patients undergo a VATS uh, to get tissue for correlative studies. Um, they get three cycles of PEMBRO. They undergo an extended pleurectomy decortication, get adjuvant PEMBRO, uh, adjuvant uh, chemo, and then PEMBRO for a year. And here our primary objective is to assess the presence and strength of the T-cell inflamed phenotype and identify a variety of potential biomarkers that may predict a robust response to PD-1 therapy. And because we have a very strong uh, radiologic program at the university, we're also exploring image-based textural analysis to assess therapy-based changes in tumor composition so we can compare the pathologic changes to the radiologic changes that we see at surgery. And clearly, these early clinical data support further evaluation of checkpoint blockade in meso in the randomized setting. And all that I can say now is that phase three trials are certainly in development and stay tuned. 
In uh, the Netherlands, Paul Boss is leading a phase two trial of nivolumab. This is a single arm study um, in recurrent pleural meso after first or second line treatment. And the convenient thing about being a pulmonologist is that you can do thoracoscopies on your own patients. And so he is getting post-treatment biopsies at uh, cycle three. Primary endpoint here is a little unusual. It's disease control rate at 12 weeks. I um, mean, he has a variety of correlative endpoints. Uh, this is another Javelin trial that Rafid Hassan presented a few weeks ago, um, an expansion cohort of Avelumab in pleural or peritoneal meso, and there was no preselection for PDL1 biomarker positivity. Primary endpoint was response rate. The trial had 50 patients, and the first 20 patients were presented at ESMO. Typical patient characteristics that you'd expect 45% of them had um, one or less than one line of therapy. And here you'll see a partial response rate of only 15%. Is that really any different? We'll look at the disease control rate of 60%. So you add them up at 75%, and it's really quite similar to the PEMBRO trial. And again, we'll, we will have greater numbers soon, and um, hopefully we'll um, see further data soon. A number of uh, planned and pending clinical trials of checkpoint inhibitors in MISO um, the Keynote 0158 trial is a biomarker-driven trial that's about to open in the U.S. We're opening it next week, and it has a meso expansion cohort. They are looking, patients have to be pre-screened either for pd one expression, um, a gamma interferon profile, or MMR. Um, ETOP has proposed, but has not yet gotten approval for a randomized phase two maintenance study. And as I said, uh, there will hopefully be a randomized phase three trial of single agent Prembro in the US. Um, in terms of NEVO, the French have the NEVO plus or minus IPI study in the pipeline. And there is a um, chemo combination study that is planned of DERVA plus uh, pemetrexid cisplatin. And whether that occurs in Australia or Canada or both is still under discussion. So in summary, in terms of CTLA-4, phase two trials suggest prolonged disease control in a fraction of patients. Data from the randomized phase two determined trial is eagerly anticipated and combinations and biomarkers need to be explored. In terms of PD-1, PDL one there's very promising data from Keynote 28, similar data from Javelin, two phase two trials enrolling, and multiple other trials of single agents and combinations in the pipeline in the first line previously treated neoadjuvant and maintenance settings. And with that, I thank you from our mesothelioma program.